choosing a different spot today because of the skylight problem that I talked about last time. It's pounding down on my desk area right now, so figured I'd move a few seats over and get to see some more stuff uh, in my room, which I was thinking I do have, I have a ton of collectibles, so uh, at some point I'll probably do a little tour to show you what some of these are. Um, you know, just a couple here. That's a, a photo I bought from the photographer uh, of Bob Seger and Bruce Springsteen. Uh, that is a signed Paul Westerberg uh, photo. Um, the Magnolia Electric Company tribute I'll get into uh, on that video. Uh, that's actually my brother's. Um, this is, uh, I just put this together. The bottom is a menu from when I first saw Wilco, a menu from the restaurant uh, called Johnny D's in Somerville, Massachusetts. Um, and then on top is a postcard that my brother sent me when I was going through a rough time. Uh, this over 20 years ago, he sent me a postcard uh, that had Lucinda Williams uh, on the cover and he included a very kind note. Um, so that's just a little, uh, the one more, that's Bruce Springsteen at, uh, on Broadway. I took that photo. I, I took it with my iPhone in a dark room and it actually came out pretty good. So I'll share that stuff in another video. That's a little, little taste test. Last one in, in view. Well, there's two more in view. Chris Bell, uh, that is also my brother's. Uh, he and I always loved that image from his solo record. And uh, this is an Uncle Tupelo poster signed by Jay and Jeff. Uh, but this is my first delayed uh, record store day, June record store day video. For the first time, I don't, I can't remember how old record store day is, maybe 13 years. I don't, uh, when I lived, I think, so I moved to San Francisco in 2005 and I think it started shortly after I moved there. Maybe it started before, not sure. But this is the first one that I did not get online for. I remember the early ones, I would go to Amoeba and there there wouldn't even be a line. There would just be a few people. Now Record Store Day is a huge deal. Um, and obviously I'm in favor of all of it <laughs> for the most part. Uh, I know a lot of people in the vinyl community have, have issues with Record Store Day. If it's gonna get people to buy more vinyl records and support artists, uh, I think it's it's great. Um, but this this year's list, or this first of two from 2021, just didn't have much on there that interested me. It was a huge list, but just every year I see two or three things I sort of have to have, and I didn't have that this year. Uh, in retrospect, I wish I had shown up to get the Grateful Dead box set because I'm really getting into these Rhino Grateful Dead box sets. Uh, I missed out on the Cornell one, which is now 500 plus bucks on eBay, and the most recent one, uh, which is from, I think, the 72 tour, and I think the show was in France. Um, it's now selling for about 200 a pop, and I'm probably just going to wait for that to go down. Um, so. I did end up going to my local record store day in the afternoon, so after all the lines had faded and all the probably good stuff was gone. And I got two releases, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be making two videos around this first record store day. This first one is what I got when I got there, and I'm gonna add some recent purchases outside of record store day. I'm gonna do the same thing for the second video. And the reason I'm splitting it up is because these I got the day of, as I mentioned, in the afternoon. And then I did go online at about 10 a.m. Uh, I went to theingroove.com, which is, I'm sure most people watching this are familiar with. Uh, it's a record store in Phoenix, Arizona. They have a great online system. And I bought, I ended up buying four or five, I think, records from Record Store Day. Those should arrive this week. Uh, and when they do, I will do that second video. But I got two records from Record Store Day in store, and then I'm just gonna show you sort of a, 
a smattering of, of other recent purchases I've made, because I've made quite a few. Uh, I think the post-COVID um, sort of joy of, of some of us being able to get out and see our friends and have a drink at a bar, have a good meal, excuse me, especially here in California where, you know, I am in San Jose and I think we're at about 82% vaccination. So uh, I feel pretty comfortable going out um, since I am vaccinated and most of my community is. Um, so I did watch a video on the Delta, I think it's the Delta variants um, last night, which is a little bit concerning, but Let's stick to music for now. So I got these two records. The first is this comp, uh, Golden Gate Groove, The Sound of Philadelphia, live in San Francisco, 1973. Means a lot to me because I was born in 1973 and I've, I lived in San Francisco for eight years uh, and just has a lot of really cool uh, stuff on it. The OJs, um, just, a, just I read really good things about it. Legacy put this out. And uh, so it says, Golden Gate Groove, the sound of Philadelphia Live in San Francisco 1973 documents the first and only time that the stars of Philadelphia International Records ever played in concert with the label's fabled house band known as MFSB. Uh, it looked like this took place June 27th, 1973. So about five months before I landed on this planet. <laughs> June, July, August, September, October. I'm good with counting my months, five months. Uh, so I picked this up, have not opened it yet. Uh, I'm gonna listen to a bunch of records today and that will likely be one of them. And then I had to get this, the Please to Meet Me outtakes. Uh, I, you know, the, the, the three great, a lot of people would say they had more than three, but the three replacements records that I love the most. Uh, Let It Be is my favorite. Please to Meet Me is probably number two. And then Tim. Uh, I really love All Shook Down. Uh, their earliest really punk records, I, I've never really gotten that into. Although I do, when I listen to them, I do like them. So I'll go back to them at some point. But this is what seems to be a compliment to the box set uh, that came out last year, uh, which I do have back there. Um, so this, these are the only two that I purchased in store. Everything else that I was considering, I had already, I had already bought from the In Groove. And again, that'll be my next video. Or um, was gone, like the Grateful Dead box set. There's one, or, one other that I'm forgetting that I did not get that I wanted. And it's escaping me. So. Now I'm just gonna quickly go through a bunch of records that I bought recently. Um, this is the Japanese breakfast record, Soft Sounds from Another Planet. I think it came out in 17, yeah, on the great label Dead Oceans. I absolutely love their new record, Jubilee. Uh, I actually read um, the lead singer's memoir. I think I mentioned it a number of times because it's taken me, it takes me forever to finish a book now but I really did like it. Uh, it's about her relationship with her mother who uh, had passed. Um, and she talked a lot about her, her upbringing and eating Korean food. It's called uh, Crying in H Mart and I do recommend it. I think it's a New York Times bestseller. Um, but I bought this, haven't opened it yet because I heard the song Diving Woman on Spotify and I thought, wow, what is this? I think I was out going for a walk, I was with my dog walking around town or something, and it came on and I was floored and I looked and it was Japanese breakfast and it was this record. So picked it up. Dead Oceans always reasonably prices their records. This is 20 bucks. Her new record, Jubilee, came with a mat, you know, a, a, a mat for your turntable and it's a colored vinyl and it was only 20 bucks. So bravo to Dead Oceans. You guys do great stuff. Next, for two bucks, got this. Sorry, the records just fell over. For two bucks, uh, An Evening with Belafonte. Makes me think of my friend Scott. He said his father, uh, who we lost, I believe it was last year, was a big Harry Belafonte fan. So 
I saw this and picked it up. Uh, I'm gonna try and spin this today. I'm trying to do more crate digging. And right now my plan is in about a week, um, I am going to hit the road and be driving for about two to three weeks. Uh, I am going to my brother's memorial, which is in Chicago, uh, which is in, uh, which is around July 10th to the 13th. There's a few events planned. And I'm driving out there, leaving the dog with his babysitter. He's a little bit too old to take these trips now. Uh, I'm gonna go to Seattle, hopefully see Mazzy and the archivist. Go to Portland, stop at some national parks, and just sort of go wherever I end up going. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm gonna hit a lot of record stores, and I will hopefully do some videos from the road. Uh, I found this for eight bucks. Don't know what's going on here. I have almost every Will Oldham record, uh, and this is Ryan Murphy and Will Oldham, Almost Heaven. Came out in 2000 on Drag City. It looks like it's just four tracks. Not really sure what to expect here, but I'm gonna find out. I recently thought about going to see Superwolves, which is uh, Will Oldham and Matt Sweeney. Uh, they are back after 16 or 17 years since their last record. I ended up not getting tickets. I was still a little bit worried about COVID and wasn't sure if it was gonna happen. My buddy Travis went to the show in Sonoma and he was texting me saying what an absolutely remarkable show it was. Uh, I considered driving to uh, Southern California um, the day or two days after, but ended up just not doing it. So looking forward to that record and, and the Super Bowls record, which is in the mail and on the way. Uh, last week, I took a day trip to Santa Cruz. Uh, I bought a plant in memory of uh, another friend who passed. Uh, it's, it's you know we've all had a tough year. This uh, my friend Kenny, who was my first friend uh, when I was a kid. Uh, he lived across the, we lived across the street from each other, and we probably met when we were. I think we moved into that house when I was five, and Kenny and I just became buddies. We played wiffle ball together. We played flake football. We would grab tennis rackets from the garage and go into his bedroom and pretend we were rock stars. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember, we were, we were listening to hair metal then, like Journey and Asia and uh, Kenny was a good, a good, good man. He moved up to Vermont, has, had three, three, three boys, I believe, married. And uh, Kenny died of cancer uh, last week and I, I share that because when I went to Santa Cruz, I went into a coffee shop and I saw a beautiful plant. And I bought that plant because I was thinking about Kenny. Um, Kenny and I exchanged a few messages in March when he, he, he had, I think it was a fairly short, uh, short from diagnosis until he passed. So I reached out to him on Facebook. We, we shared some, some great memories about being kids and I'm glad that we connected before uh, he left us. Kenny was a was a good man and a good friend to me, but I bought that plant because I was thinking about him when I saw it, and it's now up in my bedroom, and I'm going to think about him uh, as I uh, nurture that plant. So uh, to my friend Kenny, I hope you are resting in peace. Um, and at the same time, after that, I went to a uh, record store in Santa Cruz, and I bought this Pine Grove record, a band that I had never heard of until uh, my brother passed. And I, uh, from a number of his friends, this is apparently one of his favorite bands. And this came out, this is called Cardinal. It came out in 2016. You can see I haven't opened it yet. This will be opened and played today. Um, so I was doing a lot of reflecting when I was in Santa Cruz. I spent some time just sitting at the, the beach watching the surfers around the boardwalk. And it was a nice day. And I got to think about you know, my friend Kenny, who, who I lost, and, and my brother. And of course today, on Father's Day, I'm thinking about my stepfather, who I lost last year as well. Um, so uh, thank you all for your